shiny touche back with another one man you know all that yada yada but yeah check this out man you know this is my first reaction video man so basically without further ado you already know andrew tate he been going viral man uh yeah man i ain't gonna lie i like him a lot you know he says what whatever he feels you know and i like that i admire that a lot and let's get let's get straight to it man let's Get all that yapping, man. Let's get straight to it. Show me your philosophy. I don't think you're a bitch. I think you're a water boy. Don't you switch know, Water boy for patriarchy and, and capitalism and whatnot. Look at this, man. This guy got pink hair. Talk. I got a Britney Spears shirt. Talk about patriarchy. Patriarchy. See? And then the thing is, man... He's he has his ideology. He went into the feminist pool and then he drank from the he's drunken with the propaganda that America has stole upon him. Do you understand? So with this man, and he also thinks like, hey man, I could get away with this. I could I could be a loser, I could be a nerd and just think uh, you know, uh, men are oppressing women and all this other stuff. See. And sometimes people like him, they think they can do this. They think they're going to get more ass like this. But honestly, this guy looks miserable. <sighs> he's brainwashed. He's, he's feminizing men. That's what it is. All right, let's keep going. Right, and sort of regressive ideas about manhood, and uh, which is why the teenage audience like consumes it so much, you know? You got these young boys that are like, grappling with feelings of powerlessness and you come in and offer them like the ultimate machismo ideas of like how to be a man but you're just machismo. you're so off base for us it's like no you're off base buddy don't you ever say machismo see you want men to be like you if men were being like you you know we'll have women ruling us uh, trampling all over us in our households and stuff, and then we want to be able to lead the households, and then we want to be strong, masculine men, you know, be ready for battle when somebody comes in to uh, evade all the people. So why would we do what you say? Should we be powerless like you? Should we? Let's ask, let's ask, ask yourself that. That's all, that's all I wanted to say from there. You know, let's keep going. It's tragic, really. So you think that I am inspiring the youth of today, the masculine youth of today, to become men, and you think that's a negative thing? Why? And Why? No, I? I don't. I don't think you're inspiring them to become men, because like real men are in touch with their emotions and their vulnerability, and don't need to be like wielding and taking power. Real okay, first off, you don't know what a real man, dude. You have pink hair. All right, let's put that first, okay? And another thing is, no, men do not need to be in touch with their feminine side, their emotional side. What makes us real men is we can control our emotions. That's what separates us from the female. Everybody knows that, you know what I'm saying? And see, this is the propaganda in America. They want us like women so we can be trampled around so we won't have to rebel against uh, the government, come on, dude, you know, we not supposed to be all in touch with our emotional and be vulnerable and stuff. No, what makes us men that we can control it. When a woman gets with a man, a woman are more unstably emotional. Men are supposed to be stably, uh, have st uh, emotional stability, you know, so we have to be that rock. Let's keep going. Real men are self-aware and, and you come in offering them like somebody that they can follow where you want to be like the savior, the guy, the badass. If you're, like, if, you're a man, if you're a man who's in touch with his strength and his masculine power, why does that mean you're not capable of reflecting in words and being self-aware? That is, they're not mutually exclusive. Well, well, apparently for you, they are though, because on the one hand, That's you true. talk about on the one hand, you talk about how you made your first million while exploiting women on webcams. Correct. And then, and then you post on the Instagram post about how you're gonna, you and your brother are going to bring purity back to women. So, yeah, you absolutely lack self-awareness because you yourself admit you made your, your initial money on sort of like 
the you profited off the supposed impurity of women mm -hmm. around sex. All right. So first thing, the word exploiting is an incorrect use of language because I've never exploited anyone in my life. Well, Every let me ask you this. When you made your first million with the women in the webcams, how many of the women who are on those webcams earning for you, how many of them are millionaires now? The ones who made millions are also millionaires. It was 50%. <laughs> right. It was 50 You know what I'm saying? I would argue the point here, sir. I would argue the point here that when right. they, a, girl, a girl worked. He's already trying to paint him in a bad light, trying to say he they he taking most of the money and exploiting them without uh, giving them n nothing in return. But the thing is, he was the brains behind the operation. He was telling them what to say and shit. They were just the face of it all. all. Um, you know, in all reality, if you're the owner and you tell the employees what to say, let's be real. They're actually getting more than real employees at like McDonald's and stuff. I mean, the, the cuts, I'm saying the cuts, you know what I'm saying? Way more. The employees that at McDonald's, they get like what? Like 0.001% of the money that the owner gets. Let's be real, bro. That's actually a good deal, bro. But let's keep going. For me, it was 50-50. If you work for nearly any other business in the world, you do not get 50% of the takings. If you go work at McDonald's and you ring up a register for an hour, you do not get 50% of that register. So that is a lie. Most companies pay you less than 1%. So to sit here and say yeah, that I was exploiting people is absolute fallacy. So that's the first well, thing. It's, it's it's like, so that's the first fallacy. I've let you talk. Now it's my turn. That's the first uh, fallacy. The second fallacy is this whole patriarchy bullshit you're saying that are outdated ideas of masculinity. Yeah. The idea of patriarchy is not an outdated idea of masculinity. Perhaps in the West, in a declining empire, as we've already discussed on this stream, in an empire which is in absolute decline, you can have men who sit here and think there's absolutely nothing necessary about masculinity in the modern world, and that you don't need to be strong or brave or any of these things. You can sit around and cry and you're still a man. That is not true in most places on the planet. In most places on the planet, men need to be capable and competent because if they don't, they do not survive. And I'll tell you something now, sir. I'll tell you something else now. You will sit here and talk, of all, talk right now about the patriarchy and how you can be in touch with your feet feelings and all this bullshit. The second you're physically assaulted or physically threatened, the first thing you do is you call a toxically masculine police officer to turn up with a weapon to protect you because you cannot protect yourself. You are not against the idea of masculine power. You're not against the idea of men who have masculine imperatives to defense. All you've done is outsource it to someone else to do at the end of a phone call because you're too scared to do it yourself. So you're fucking exactly. lying. You're lying. No, that's, you that's don't absolutely these correct. Ideas. You don't want to do them yourself, and you hope everyone else does them for you so you can sit around and play fucking video games. See, there, the, my, my, the point I posit is there's more than just physicality with men. And you talk about exploitation. You absolutely exploit people with your affiliate links. That is exploitation. Like I, as well as Bucky and Clicks, know anybody who's an influencer knows that affiliate links are total bullshit because basically – you give an affiliate link to somebody who promotes you and he makes a little money off of it, but you're getting free advertising. That's exploitation. No influencer is going to take an affiliate link position because it's absolute exploitation. Like you, I I'll say one thing. I also, I wanted to do this, um, the affiliate links, uh, because he is really popping right now. So it's going to get a lot of views. And it's also helping him and it's helping the person out. He's going to get some money. They're going to get some money off of it as well as he's going to get some, you know, it's a win. I feel like it's a win win. I think it's, I think it's a good plan, man. I don't think he's exploiting them at all. I don't think it's a scam. You know, uh, it's just, you want to find something bad about him. You want to find so much on him. It practically exists on him. Now, the idea, of, the idea of manhood is, is you can talk about, like, purely physical strength. Like, first off, if I get assaulted, I'm probably not going to call the police, okay? Because the police aren't actually very adept at actually solving crimes, right? They don't, they don't function very well in the, absolute, the actual solution of crimes. They show up later and just sort of muck up the business. Correct. Right? So but I, there's, agree, I agree with that. So how would you defend yourself in the effect of an assault? You just lay there and take it? Well, so it would it would depend on the assault. I would probably remove myself from the situation, right? That's not 
obviously that's not something that's going to be applicable to the scenario we're doing here on the screen. We're not going to pretend you can run away because that def defeats the point of the well, question. Well, what are we, are we here to talk about some hypothetical assault? No, we're, you know no, we're, no, like we're not here to talk about it. 99% of Americans never even encounter a violent crime. We're not here to so talk about hypothetical assault. thing is like nonsense. No, we're not here to talk about hypothetical assaults. We're here to talk about the hypothetical paradigms and ideas around masculinity because you started this conversation saying that the patriarchy and capitalism and all this bullshit. And I'm yeah. sitting here saying to you, I'm sitting here saying to you, you live in a very soft society. You're completely correct. 99% no. of Americans are not correct. We live incorrect. in a soft society. If you were the incorrect. same person yeah. in most places on the planet, you would have had your ass beat because you Dude, are a weak man. And weaklings are not respected. Let me tell you something, my friend. My friend, I'll let you talk afterwards. Never in uh, human history, in any single civilization, in any single empire across the history of Earth, have men been celebrated for their weakness. Ever once. It doesn't matter if you were an Aztec or the, or the Mao dynasty, from China all the way to South America. In every single history book you can read, men who were respected and men who had stories written about them were written about them because they were strong. Weak men have never been respected. Weak men have never mattered. For you to come along and say, I think it's okay to be weak is fine. That is your initiative. That is your no. decision. But the reason you have done that is because you lack brave. You lack balls. No, you're not brave. You're, you lack oh, bravery. Lack balls. Dude, I have more balls than you'll ever have, boss. Because you, you're changing the goalposts here because you're the one who's sitting here calling emotional strength and emotional vulnerability. You're defining it as weakness. It's but it's not. All forms of strength are important. You're saying it's that. Not. You're, yes, it is. Physical strength it's, is just as important as emotional strength. Emotional strength is actually more powerful than physical strength. Okay. Because the, the fact of the matter is, no matter how physically strong you are, somebody bigger could come along and beat your ass. But it's emotional strength that helps you survive the ass beating. You're right. You're right. Uh, you I know, know what that's right. You're right. That's a good point. You're saying so when someone comes along to assault you, you won't call the police afterwards and you won't fight back. You'll lay in a ball. You'll get an ass kicking, but you're emotionally strong enough to just to deal with the fact that you got an ass whooped in front of everyone no, in your week. And that's he, fine. He, and everyone should be like you. And that, you know what we again, call, I'm not know, saying people everyone like you are like called in most places in the world. People like you yeah. are called in most places studs. in the world are called victims. We're You're called, called prey. Studs. You're a prey. We're called studs. And, and, and let me tell you something. When I inspire men to. You can never be a stud with that attitude, man. So you won't do nothing when somebody comes in and attacks you. You're just going to die. And you think that's a game. You smiling and stuff with you. Freaky little smile. You think that's a game? It's not a game, sir. Get your self defense up. Get your muscle up. Get your gains up. Get your frame up. You have no frame whatsoever. Come on, bro. This this ain't it. This ain't it. Going with the propaganda, you think that's tight. You think going with it is going to put you on some pedestal and, and, and women are going to appreciate you and respect you. Well, that's false. That will never happen, and you know it. So the thing is, too, you got to understand this. Now, I feel like there's some dudes that really think like A lot of dudes think like that, you know, how he's thinking. It's just sad. It's just really sad. You know? It's just sad, man. To grow up and be their biggest, strongest version of themselves, emotionally, mentally, physically, in every single realm, that is not a negative thing. There's nothing wrong with a man being big and strong. And let me tell you one more thing. We're sitting here talking to professional video game players. You're a professional Fortnite player yourself. You, I am. I don't, okay, I don't know how the game works. I've never played the and game. And I was a I professional musician and a director. I've done a great many things. Perfect. Good. And, and you're obviously a successful, smart individual. You're obviously mentally intelligent, right? I'm not talking Absolutely. about, I'm not saying that just because someone's strong that they don't have to be mentally adept. I'm not saying that somebody doesn't have to be emotionally adept just because they're strong. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that mental, I'm saying that physical strength is also an important thing, but let's look at the video game Fortnite, which I've never played. It might be incorrect, but if you have stats on your character, you're going to try and max out your strength character. You're not going to have a character, which is weak. Every single person, if they're if they're given a video game character and said, choose what statistics you want, is going to click max strength every single time. And then they're going to go back into the real world and pretend strength isn't, doesn't matter. Strength does matter. The difference is Ooh. in the real world, it's hard to achieve. And because it's hard to obtain, it's the ostrich problem. You don't want to accept that it's hard to do. You don't want to go through the pain to get it. So you want to pretend it doesn't matter. Just because you don't want to go through the bullshit it requires to be a physically dangerous individual does not mean physical dangerous individuals are not respected by society. And I'll tell you See, one more thing. One more well, thing. 
One more thing. Right. If me and you were to stand side by side in front of a hundred women, in front of a hundred fucking police officers, a hundred fucking enemies who want to kill us, whatever it is, they would all choose to fuck with you before they choose to fuck with me. Because they'd look at me and I have a certain status and a certain presence which comes from my physical stature. Not just because of my capability, but because of the things I've gone through to become this physical specimen of man. They know I'm not the kind of guy who you really want to mess with. They look at you, you and go, he you, is a victim because that's you, what you look like, my friend, but, and it's your own see, choice. See, that's just it, though. The only reason they would choose you in that element is because of the patriarchal fucking male-dominated society. Here that we, we fucking go. Here we go. Here's the deal, Andrew. This is fun. No, 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 no. I'm not done. No, no, name if, if, hey, hey, Andrew. Name hey, Andrew. Name hey, okay, so with the patriarchal society thing. You would have it. What other way will you have it, sir? Come on now. If we're in a matriarchal society, we will be killed off by the patriarchal societies. Duh. Why would we have women lead us? Why would we have the women to be leaders? That doesn't make any sense. It's always been this way since the beginning of time. Why would we change it now, buddy? Come on now, think about it. Any major society uh, in the past never, never stood the test of times because they was always dominated by the patriarchal societies. You know what I mean? So, so just ask yourself, um, you indoctrinated individual, what other way would you have it? And it seems like you hate your gender so much that you will just keep this um, ridiculousness going on. And we live in a Ghana-centric society, actually. There's a lot. There's a lot more politicians that are females nowadays than ever. From history, that wasn't patriarchal. Name a society from history that was not patriarchal. See, that, listen to me, though, that is why people yeah. like yourself are bugging and going into hyper mode I right now, because society's changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Society's I'll tell you changing. Why. I'll tell right? you why, my friend. I'll tell you why we cannot name a single society in history across the entire planet that was not patriarchal, because patriarchal societies are optimized to survive. When things get difficult, when people are put in survival situations, we naturally revert to our gender roles. I'll tell you something. If we were all on a ship and the ship got shipwrecked, the men would start building and digging and hunting and the women would start. Report were destroyed in real time. Yeah, no, 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 I don't. I mean, I do live in a clown world. Because there are people like you that are sitting there like pushing this inane philosophy. So, yeah, I get it. I accept that. But first off, we haven't seen a, pa a non-patriarchal society yet. We're definitely moving toward it. And, and if you want to look at America and look at some of the problems with America, like what problems do we have? Well, there's an enormous wealth gap. You mentioned the Roman Empire earlier. The Roman Empire didn't fall because of laziness. It fell because of overconfidence because of an income gap between the richest and the poor, and because of political corruption. All three things that are sort of happening in America right now. So Agreed. absolutely, America could fall, but it's not because men were turning soft, right? The idea no, of men being soft, it, it the, the idea of men being soft, Andrew, is a battle cry of men who see that purely physical stature is no longer the only defining quality. Because like you said, they could line me and you up and all those brutes like the Secondly, the fact oh, that yeah. I am actually fact the secondly the fact that I am actually mixed race, that I grew up in the south side of Chicago with my father Absolutely. who was I more know more about marginalized communities than you do because you are as white as they fucking come and you're sitting there talking well, about marginalized to a marginalized absolutely. person. Absolutely. So absolutely. Let me ask more bullshit. More bullshit. Oh, I never woke up and thought I'm brown, so I had to find this white guy with pink hair to fight for me. I woke up and fight for myself. And that is the if point. You know when you fight for yourself, you fight for yourself when you're a man. That requires all forms of power. Around talking about how you got to protect women, you got to get a cut of her OnlyFans and all this because you own her private parts. That's nonsense, bro. That's well, nonsense. That's well, your well, trauma speaking. It depends how. It depends how. So you shouldn't get a cut of your own her OnlyFans. Why y'all have so much issues with this? This is what I don't understand, man. First off. 
They say property. Well, let's look at it, man. Who's giving away the woman to the man? The father is giving away the woman to the man. Like, here, here's my daughter. You have her now. When you get married. So what do you mean? You have responsibility for the woman. Without Responsibility without authority is slavery. You understand? So you need to be responsible for her. So you should have authority for her as well. This is common sense. You should have authority in your household. Your woman and your kids. What are you talking about? It's not trauma. It's, it's, no, it's not trauma. That's, this is how it always was. This is tradition, sir. You want to go against your biology and things. And you want to go against it so bad. This is asinine. At its finest. I hope the men are listening to you. I really hope. And they keep listening to you. We're doomed. How you heal the trauma, right? And when I said that being a trauma is part of being a good man, you said it's part of being a human. I agree. But I think you can be a very, very good woman with a good heart and you can be a good person. You don't need a traumatic life to be a good woman. However, to be a good man, you need to have a traumatic life because any man See, who's not had... I'll tell you why. Let me answer. It's, any man who's any man who's not had difficulty, any man who's not gone through something that's difficult is not very good at being a man because when shit hits the fan, people turn to the nearest man in the room and say, what is the solution? Someone just broke in the house. You go to the man. Fucking, there's a, a natural disaster, a hurricane. You go to the man. There's a war. You go to the men. So men who have not been through trauma are not very good at being men because they're not capable of dealing with trauma. Wait, so you, pause right there, though, Andrew. Because you, you said you, when you go to war, you go to the men. But the only reason you have a war is because of men and their lack of awareness about their own feelings. Oh, That's so why saying, war exists in the first place. So you're saying if you if had the more war, women leaders, we wouldn't no even war. have war. Okay, so if you're we had saying more war. women leaders, we wouldn't even have war. Men literally are responsible for war by a okay. lack of emotional awareness. Interesting. That's how it starts. Interesting. So let's let's make let's make this the final point before we move on. Uh -huh. You just said that if all the leaders were women, we wouldn't even have war. I, the, I said if we had more women leaders, yes, there would okay, be less cool. war. The fact that you hate your own gender so much is quite amazing to me. But actually, I don't let me hate you... my own gender. Let me another point. See, see why do you, why do you do a point? Let me tell you why you're no, wrong. No, 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 you know, you don't get to wrong. gaslight me and tell me I hate my own gender just because I'm displaying a, 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 a version of manhood that you're uncomfortable looking at. I don't. Right? You don't get. To, you don't get to say I, hate my I don't give a fuck. That I'm weak because I present a version of manhood that has struggled just like you, that has conquered just like you but it is out, lives outside the idealized patriarchy that was sold to me. You don't get to gaslight me because you're uncomfortable. Cool. With you the type of man that I, I you love men. You love men. Cool. The point I'm making is you're saying that the world wouldn't have a war. Dude, was, you no, are backed up against the wall. Wait, 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 wait. No, chill, 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 chill. Let, no, T, have his final, let, right. let T have his final statement. Then we're going to wrap this up and get someone else. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in here right now. I just got to fix my camera. One right. second. Yeah, you're Oh, do Son, a poll. Man. Do I a poll because I'm interested in seeing what the chat thinks. The reason you're totally wrong saying that the world would have no, less war if there was no female leaders is because if you actually ask anybody who's been in the corporate world for long enough, the companies that have the most arguments, the most difficult corporate structures to deal with, in fact, even if you ask most women, they say, I don't like having a woman boss. I'd rather work for a man. When you have a whole bunch of women in charge, it's nothing but a fucking bitch fest and it's a shit show. Every single fucking person who's ever worked in corporate knows that. Every single person who's ever worked in the world knows that. That women actually, as beautiful as they are and they're good at lots of different things, they would perhaps not perhaps, they would prefer to work for a male boss because it's a stronger, more clear leadership structure. Having a bunch of women in charge of countries is not going to make a fucking peaceful world. And the fact you believe that shows you. Let's end this thing off just like this. Men are just better leaders. Period. That's just how it is, especially with war and with this, with, uh, within worldly problems. You know what I mean? And also, uh, we're more logical based, you know, we're more uh, qu quick thinkers. We're also more, we're, we're very, uh, uh, we're very instinctual, you know, very more uh, instinctual. Also, uh, we're, we're more uh, logical based, especially when certain problems hit the fan. We're more decisive and women are more indecisive. That's why they ask us, what do we, what do you want to do? We go on a date or whatever. They ask us, what do you want to do? And that's for good reason, you know, because we out here, you know, we take the woman out, 
You know, we're supposed to lead. We're supposed to control. The man has the last say-so. Women are usually impulsive during times of peril. You know, that's just what it is. That's just the, the truth. And it's nothing wrong with stating that. You know, I don't know why people, they, oh my God. Oh, he's, he's this, he's that, he's sexist because he said, no, he's not sexist. He's realistic. You know, you guys want to cross play different genders and you guys want to go against your biology. And you know, this is just unnatural. It's inordinate, inordinate affections. Which we need to stop right here, man. And Andrew Tate comes in. Man, I feel like he's doing great work. He's staying traditional with his beliefs. He's not misogynistic at all. He's not. He's realistic. Whoever thinks he's misogynistic, you guys are going with the propaganda. You guys are the problem. You guys need to stop. You guys need to chill out for a minute. Let's read into what he's saying. He is not prejudiced against women. He is. He does not hate women. That's because that's what misogynist means. A lot of people don't know what misogynist means. First off, so don't ever say this man is misogynistic, uh, uh, prejudiced against women or whatever. Don't never say that. Prejudice is preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. He has experience with women. He has his experiences. And that's what it is. That's why he says the things he's saying. He has a lot of experience, man. He's like 34. He understands these things. He moved all, you know, he been to almost, what, 70 different countries. He been around the block, man. Why are y'all hating on him? Why are y'all trying to cancel him? Let him do his thing. What is he doing to y'all? Why are women tripping so much on him? Why? Like, like, men don't just go into women's spaces like, what are that podcast, Go Daddy and shit? Y'all can go crazy. Them women ain't never got canceled or none of that. Y'all trying to cancel this man, bro. Let, let him be, man. Let him do his thing. He ain't hurting nobody. Obviously, it's, it's crazy. A lot of women want to get into our spaces, all in the men's spaces so bad. We don't never want to get in y'all spaces like that, bro. Come on, let's be real, man. Let's be real, bro. Like, this is asinine. Damn, clown world. It's a clown world we living in, bro. That's it for today, man. Holla at your boy.